Well, basically, my, my way to, to work is, I mean, uh, first of all, um, investigation, investigation of um, processes or systems of thought that have been developed in the, by the Western mind as, and leads in, at some point to what uh, René Descartes called the rationalism, so modernity. I'm very, my background is philosophy, actually, before to do art, and I, I think this idea of um, what we call in French inference, which is the, the process of, uh, I mean, the kind of uh, unavoidable uh, aftermath, I don't know if it's correct, is something that I've, I, I really do care in the process of, 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 of creation that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do, to provide um, um, a different thought regarding um, political issues and 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 and, uh, and generally this I have to say also generally I like to speak about what I know. When when I talk about Africa, I talk especially about Algeria and Congo because both are countries in which I lived. I go often and 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 in many ways between my time, uh, I mean sharing this time between France, Algeria, and also Congo quite a lot, from the Brazzaville one, uh, helped me to. Uh, to develop, I mean, to be aware about this necessity of using at some point not only archives and materials, but to to give access to the audience, the readers, the, the not the readers but the the, the viewers, uh, to at some point to sort of uh, I don't like this word, but at some a little bit closer to a reality. That's why. Um, if sometimes it happens that come, you come to my studio, you will see a small, very tiny place, but full of newspaper and, and old books and, and materials, um, which I use, like in this work, in, in, in movies and slideshow, but they, they really do exist. I mean, I lived with them, I read them, and, and so on. In other projects in which I mixed up um, archives, uh, papers and, uh, and uh, from books and newspapers. I also use real items, um, mask and uh, everyday life object, spoon, uh, broken, repaired in a way, fabric, raffia fabric from Cuba and chaco cut, repaired with piece of fabric of Vichy, uh, it's impo very important Vichy, the, the city of Vichy. So at some point I would say that this approach uh, leads to uh, sort of uh, connection between tradition and modernity and between the irrational to the rational one and what emerged from this. I think they, have, they are also a key concept of the way we have to think the world today. I think that I would say we are still, we are still modern. It, this is not over, absolutely not. And uh, the, the, the question of tradition is every day, uh, I mean, emerging. I don't believe that, I mean, I don't pretend to change the world, with, the world with my work, but I think the world has changed already. And this is what most of the population of the West do, don't want to see and accept. So, you know, this idea of non malignant movement reminds me also of a lot of conversation I had with my father, he's an old Algerian communist, uh, a revolutionary uh, uh, member of the Communist Party, and I, I used to have so many uh, uh, chat uh, with him um, when Gaddafi died, he cries. So uh, he has this kind of uh, Fanon portrait, and then Boumediene, and then um, Saddam Hussein, Gamal Abdel Nasser, and Fidel Castro, Che Guevara. I think this idea of uh, uh, I was talking about yesterday uh, the, about reappropriation and how. It came to my mind that I've been developing first, as I told you before, a, pro a corpus of, of, of uh, thought uh, embodied with archives and documents uh, through researches um, uh, without any terminology before to get into this terminology of reappropriation. And slowly, many years after, to understand that actually neither Proudhon nor Fanon were right. It is not about reappropriation we are talking about. We are, we are, I think the real world, the real concept behind reappropriation is repair. This is one of the of fundamental, I think, um, um, 
concept to understand the, not only the, I would say the political or cultural world we are living in, but also the natural one, the metaphysic one, something that is beyond and before us. So following this conversation I had with my father regarding the post-colonialism time and the, the failure of some project and the success of some other, I think that uh, it, the way I came into this um, um, research is about the Vatican collection and raising questions which are extremely important about the property. Who owns this collection? Is not at some point only a Vatican concern. Okay, the other institutions such as Quai Branly, Taveran, all the Volker Kunde Museum in Germany and so on, all, all these ethnologist museums have been, I think, more than half uh, collected. I mean, composed with collection coming from the nations. But the problem is that, I mean, I think the, the, the question of the property of these items is not until now resolved. To whom these items uh, belong to? Certainly, certainly not to Europe. I think that um, in the whole uh, human being, um, knowledge is what has been produced so far um, is on one hand science and actually mathematics, on the other hand art. If I take this water here and I, I mean, I, I drop a one small quantity of water, you, 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 can, you can explain this with an equation. If I smoke a cigarette, I can explain you how the molecules of, of, of smoke are spreading through the air. You can explain everything with mathematics, absolutely everything, but not art. This is the biggest enigma of, of science, of rationalism. René Descartes was a mathematician as well. And I think what is extremely interesting here is that as soon as you understand that be, behind mathematics you have the science and behind art, I'm not talking about contemporary art, I'm talking about creation. When, 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 when an African kissy, which used to be, um, which, which used to have to have two eyes made with two small shells, and one shell, who knows how and why, has been lost and replaced with a, a Western button. This raised the question of creation. So, invention, a sort of re endless, endless process of reinvention, reinventing endlessly itself. I think art is nothing but re a constant and endless process of reinventing which for mathematics is just a nightmare because you can't catch it, it's like a soap. And it's art because of this. That's a good question because Arabs are convinced that they're on the zero, which is wrong. It was invented by the Indian. It comes from India and the real mathematics, Arab mathematician knew that. So here's a, it's an interesting question why. It's an interesting question because it, re, it shows how much all this human knowledge I'm talking about is a continuum, a constant process of appropriation, reappropriation, re-exchanging. And at this point, it raised also the question of whether reappropriation is relevant or not as, an, as a vindictive statement. As I sometimes susp I mean, guess, that is a natural process. So, I would not say that the Indians own the zero, you know, but they have invented it so far. I think it's an interesting issue, this, this idea of the croisade and regarding the end of the, I mean, the beginning of the Enlightenment and this. Because on the contrary, you can also create a sort of um, coincidence. You can juxtapose. I would say the end of, um, colonialism um, yeah but the end of colonial empires was the beginning of the contemporary modernity this is also this paradox if we consider if we just forget at some point as that we are historian and modernity started with the renaissance time the second i think and that's why it's a period of time that i'm uh, I, uh, I think it's fascinating that the contemporary modernity starts with the First World War. The end of the 19th century is 1914. And I think at this time, it's also, it is definitely the end of the, of, the, of, the, of the colonial empire, in which, why, I can tell you now, 
UK, France, Belgium, Germany have involved so, so much, so many millions of, this, of their native citizens in war, in European war, for, for European reason, who died both in Africa, because there were battlefields there, in Cameroon, between uh, Ascari and Terrayo Senegalais, everywhere, in Tanzania, and also here in Germany and, and, and at the boundaries between France, Belgium and Germany. So when the Algerian revolution started in 1955, 54, a, a picture was published as a tract spread all, all around in Algiers in one night. There were five officers in these pictures. I mean, five, five guys who decided, okay, now it's enough. Enough is enough. It's almost 10 years after the massacre of Setif. In these pictures, the first thing that the, uh, I would say the French administration did not understood is that among the five guys, quite young actually, there were four French army officers. So this is what I call the reappropriation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, regarding the, 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 the work which is uh, shown here and and presenting what have been, uh, as far as I'm concerned, gathered and documented in more than two years of work. It's all about a collection of ethnographic uh, items which, um, by their presence, which is also an absence presence because I could get two access to the collection, but at the third point I said, no, it's enough. It is, uh, for me, much more a window to, uh, and Niden, and Niden uh, culture, cultures, which I do think that is just totally uh, uh, anormal to get, uh, I mean, to have such difficult access to these to this, to this cultures. So it's all about this collection of m more than 80,000 uh, items gathered and owned now by the Vatican in Rome, and uh, which was for me, as far as I'm concerned, maybe much more interesting as well to understand how these items, how this collection could be possible. And actually, the more I was, uh, I, did, I, I went three times to the collection. The more I get closer to the item, the more I felt how much um, I would say three aspects raised from this situation. The first one is, is this idea of, of, of uh, beliefs and the belief domination. Not only Christian, I would say, but monotheism mani uh, manipulation. You know that in Islam, for instance, the idolatry is much more condemned than the, the other monotheism. I mean, Jews and, and Christian could live during the golden age of Islam, paying taxes, but they could live, but not idolater. Idolater were killed. So all the idolaters of the, of the former Berber and Arab world have been removed from the, from the map. So you just have to imagine how was the slavery trade orchestrated by the Arab first. They destroyed a lot of items as well. But last but not least, the Christian uh, missionaries did destroy a lot of items, millions probably. So why we have at the, the Vatican today gather in such uh, dark storages, such, I mean, amount of, of, of items. This is the first thing. The second thing is that why until today it's so difficult to reach it? It's probably difficult to reach it because the tribal art market today become, um, uh, give, I, I would say, new values, financial values to these items. And the, the, the game that this institution is playing is like they, they keep them as a treasury. The, the third thing which I found extremely also interesting is this idea of the, I would say, the, cos the magic cosmogony. The fact that you can't deny that these items, maybe not of them, but some of them, and I know quite well the question, are charged. They have such presence that it's, 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 they are very heavy. So, and, some, and after reading a lot of um, documents, um, especially notebooks by missionaries, it's clear that they, 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 um, they, they saw them as uh, devil items, you know. So, if they have not all been destroyed and they are kept, are they kept like prisoner? Are they kept like a sort of prisoner, uh, 
uh, goddess uh, in jail, which confirmed the supremacy of Christ. You know, this is this magic issue. It, it is for me very interesting. Beyond any symbolism, huh? I'm talking about energy and and and, and magnetism. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>